Are you a candidate for a nipple sparing mastectomy? What makes someone a candidate for nipple sparing mastectomy is how much extra skin they have on their chest or on their breasts. In other words, if you have an A cup breast or B cup breast with no ptosis, meaning your nipples are not low, your nipples are at what seems to be a normal elevation on your chest, and you don't have any extra skin, you are probably a candidate for a nipple spurring mastectomy. If your nipples are low, you are probably not a candidate for a nipple spurring mastectomy because you have too much breast skin with low nipples and there's no way we can do a mastectomy and reconstruction and use and manipulate all that skin after a mastectomy. There is a group of patients who have low nipples but they only have too much skin above their nipples and not below their nipples. And there's a way to do the mastectomy that will elevate the nipples to the correct location as well as remove the excess skin in those patients. If you have too much skin above and below your nipples, then you do need to have a skin sparing mastectomy because there's no way to use all that skin in a reconstruction and there's no way to, to move your nipples to the correct location after a mastectomy. So let me back up. Let's say your nipples are too low on your chest for a nipple spurring mastectomy. You have too much skin of your breasts to, do, to be a candidate for a nipple spurring mastectomy. We can make you a candidate for a nipple spurring mastectomy if we perform a breast lift or reduction first. Because with a breast lift or reduction, we keep your nipples alive on the underlying breast tissue. So we make pedicles out of the breast tissue that maintains blood flow to your nipple while we move it up to the correct location. Now that can't be done at the exact same time as a mastectomy because the mastectomy cuts out all your breast tissue. So there's no way to have a pedicle to keep your nipple alive. But if you're not in a hurry to have your mastectomies, meaning you're a prophylactic case, or you do not have an aggressive cancer and your oncologist gives you the green light to wait two months before your mastectomies, we can perform a breast reduction or breast lift and then six weeks later we can do a nipple sparing mastectomy. So if you're not a candidate for nipple sparing mastectomy, I can do a preliminary breast lift or reduction to make you a candidate for a nipple sparing mastectomy, but that takes six to eight weeks of healing time before your tissues can handle that. In other words, there needs to be a minimum of six weeks between the breast lift or reduction and the mastectomy in order to keep your nipples alive. If you have too much skin above your nipples and too much skin below your nipples and or your nipples are too low on your chest and you are not a candidate for a nipple spring mastectomy and you are also not a candidate to wait and have a preliminary breast reduction or breast lift, it's okay. You can have a skin spurring mastectomy which will remove the excess skin and your nipple at the time of your mastectomy. And in the end, we can reconstruct your nipples anyways. Keep in mind that 99% of the time after a nipple spurring mastectomy, the nipples don't have much, if any, sensation anyways. So even if your nipples can be saved as part of a nipple spurring mastectomy, it is most likely that you will be numb anyways. And so, you got to ask yourself what you're willing to go through in order to have a nipple spraying mastectomy if you are currently not a candidate for a nipple spraying mastectomy. In other words, if, you're, if the rationale for having the preliminary breast lift, breast reduction, and then the mastectomy was to save nipple sensation, that would not be appropriate because after the mastectomy, your nipples aren't going to have much, if any, sensation anyways. In which case, I would say just get a skin spurring mastectomy, save yourself a surgery, surgery, and we will reconstruct your nipple areolar complex later. To learn more, check out our website where you can upload your photos and concerns as a virtual consult. You can also check out our price estimator to get pricing information for all the various procedures we offer. And finally, if you'd like to have your questions answered on a future podcast or Q&A video session like this, please leave a message on our SpeakPipe. You can go to our blog page and our SpeakPipe is located there. Thanks for listening.